you got to make up for it and just do it now. Well, Scott, I, I think that's really half the equation what the Fed does. And yes, we have to focus on it. I don't think the Fed gets more hawkish in terms of 75 bips now. I think 50, which is a long way from where they were just a few months ago, is going to do it um, today. And I think the market can rally, and it's another rally I'd sell. But let, let me give you some background, my think. So I'm out at Milken, been out in L.A. since uh, since February, and caught up with some old friends and made some new ones, so sat down, name it with a who's who, whether it's Lasky, whether it's uh, Sternlich, Joe Manchin, uh, Josh Friedman, phenomenal investor at Canyon, Jim Gordon, phenomenal private equity, sovereigns, and I could tell you that there's a buyer strike. So yes, the market will eventually come back, but right now, everybody, aside from Brad, who I spent a half an hour with, you know, after he was on air, um, you know, they're all negative, and they're negative because of what's going on below the market. So of course, the nuclear situation for the market is is Putin. Nobody knows what he's going to do. Not the head, not the former head of the cabinet uh, for the department, former head of Department of Defense for the cabinet, both under Trump and Obama, you know, but they are more worried than sanguine about what's going on. Maybe there's now, too much negativity. The season, Maybe there's too much negativity to Maybe your there point. Is. If everybody out there is so negative, that's probably why Gerstner's like, what's people talking about? I mean, a lot is already yeah, in the if market. You listen, if you, no, I don't think so. If you, if you listen to what, what Brad said, he said, by in a year or two, you're going to be okay. It depends on your time frame. I'm looking now and I'm looking at my price of entry, my point of entry, and I still think I get a better point of entry. And you know what? If I miss the bottom by 10%, who cares because it'll be a long way up. But I don't want to lose more money in the market. So I'm going to wait. And when you take a look at the private equity market, which I'm focused on, those prices have held up. So those have to come down also. There's never been an economic cycle where the private markets haven't come down, look, and that's a six-month lag. You have been so right. Look, it doesn't you've matter. Been, you've been right. You've been right. You've been right to be negative. You have been right to be negative um, because the market has been upset. Um, and the question is, are we at a point or nearing that point where we're not going to be upset anymore, where the market has come to grips fully with what lies yeah. ahead, and then it can stage a rally, as some have called for. Cantor's Eric Johnston telling me the other day, 8 to 10 percent in May. Whole thing could happen in May. Gerstner's trying to put some money to work now. Obviously, he's not talking about for the next 10 minutes. But if you're looking right. out where your horizon is, valuations have come down a lot. I look at what you're doing, though, and you're selling a lot. You continue to sell. Mm -hmm. You sold on Semi, mm -hmm. Jable. You sold Amazon on the back of what was a disappointing quarter. So you're, you're consolidating still in the face of the concerns that you have about this market. Right. So let's go through each one. So on Semi, sold out for the year, had a good quarter actually traded up in the quarter uh, and it's held up relatively well versus the other semis but you know I'm looking to put money into stocks that haven't haven't held up well my sale on Delta which everybody criticized well they just reported a phenomenal quarter I mean 17 percent in two weeks I'd have to be a moron not to book that profit given that I've losses elsewhere in terms of Jable they've held up well also so why not take some off the table in terms of Amazon if you take a look at what's happening, take a look at IBM, which had a good quarter. I was wrong about that. You know, they're, they're doing well. And guess where they're doing well? They're making moves in web services. And talking to some people, such as the, uh, the IT guy at a very large hospital chain, he's agnostic as to which cloud service he uses. So there's price competition going on. Things just don't grow forever, regardless of the industry. So we can take money, we can take profits, you do it. So I think Amazon, you know, it's okay, but I'm, I'm very, very worried about the consumer. So what the Fed does is only part of it. You've got a consumer that's underwater with 70% of the country living paycheck to paycheck. So if the Fed eases up, the consumer doesn't give a damn because they're still paying very high prices at the pump and for food. So I'd rather be cautious at this point. And yeah, you know, but you still have the Belskis. You still have the others saying, no, buy, let's buy, 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 buy. And the people that don't have to put money in the market, that can either put it in or hold it for a better time, as my experience, are waiting okay. to hold it for so, another time. Liz, I don't have to be invested. The, the, the same question that I, I asked some of the others, the perfect scenario for stocks to rally beginning today after the press conference is what? 
the perfect scenario, well, first of all, perfect never really happens exactly how we want it to. I, I think know, but you know what I'm alluding that, to. Is that we get what we're expecting today, which is 50 basis points. I want to react to Joe's comments a little bit. Falling into a crisis is much different than coming out of one. So we went in in an ambulance, and that was a rescue mission by the Fed to prevent further contagion through financial markets and to really throw things off. At this point, yes, were we, were we on the drugs for too long? Probably. Did we get to a point where this is a little bit scary inflation-wise? Absolutely. But weaning us off the drugs has to be a more delicate act than putting us on them. So I think they have to do this in a methodical way. What I don't think is a perfect situation is for them to go 50 and then 75 and then back down to 50. That's going to confuse the market. We need steady. We need clear expectations. We need Jerome Powell to continue to hate surprises. But what they've done is they've left the door open to be more hawkish, more aggressive if they have to be. I just don't think they're going to have to be. I think that it will take care of itself as we move through the summer where you're going to see those expectations, as Joe mentioned. Yeah. You're going to see the expectations for the neutral rate come down. You're going to see the speed that the Fed has to move come down. And the market will react appropriately in a rally fashion. Now, I want to define rally, too. I hope we don't have an 8 to 10 percent May because I think we're going to give that back. So I think we can start a small rally here, but it needs, again, to be steady and to be focused. Joe, I mean, I, I thought Liz very eloquently answered your question, right? I mean, you keep the patient alive by any means necessary. When you feel like they're ready to go out, you don't tell them to go run a marathon right away. So that, that's why they're, they're, they need to be more deliberate. Granted, they're late, very late. But nonetheless, they need to be deliberate along the process now. I go back to this whole idea of if they, they're going to raise 50 today, unless it's a shocker, right? It really comes down to what the language is for next time. The market assumes it's going to be 50 and then 50 and then maybe another 50. If it's 50 today and he says, no, I don't know. I mean, it could be, it could be 75. I mean, we're just going to see. I don't think that's going to soothe Joe, the, the market at all. So here's where I, I, I disagree. Um, in 2008, the removal needed to be slow. You had an economy that was coming from a balance sheet recession. In 2020, remember, the market went down 35 percent in 33 days. We recovered all of those losses by August, by August. So we actually did way too much. And now because we did way too much, we've got a monetary climate that's the most challenged in the last 40 years because you have the presence of inflation and you have to fight that. Now, you're talking about the market rallying 8 to 10 percent. In the month of well, May, I'm not talking let's about remind it. That's what everyone, somebody else said. Let, 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 let's remind everyone the market should rally in the month of May. OK, it's well known. Goldman Sachs put out a report on Monday about it. The blackout window ends for S&P 500 companies. So by the middle of May, all these companies are coming in to buy their stock. But Steve mentioned something that's really interesting. Private equity valuations still high. Where are real estate valuations still high? Where's the crypto market? still high. You still have excessive speculation in the market as a result from all the stimulus, both fiscal and monetary, that went into the system, the abundant liquidity, and it has to come out fast. Okay. Right. And it's not coming out fast enough. Okay. We'll make that the last word for this. Scott, Scott, can no, I make no, we got to wait, Steve. I got to take a break. I really do. Okay. I promise. I'll get you back. Uh, Starbucks is surging on the back of its earnings, having its best day since November of 2020. And one of our investment committee members just bought that stock. They have another big one to talk about, too. Halftime's back in just a